Today I'm changing the transmission fluid and filter on my Lexus GX 460 here. I'm doing this because it's regular maintenance. Also, I've been getting an error code P2714, which might relate to the transmission fluid and or the solenoid. So we're going to check out the solenoids while we're in there. These are all the tools that you're going to need for the job. Some of them you may not need if you're going to go just the drain and fill route rather than also replacing the filter. A socket set, bucket to measure the fluid as it comes out, funnel, tubing, jack stands, ramps, optional, creeper, optional, oil spill mat, the new parts including the new filter, there's a gasket, transmission fluid of course, OEM from Toyota. A diagnostic computer in order to fill the fluid to the proper level according to manufacturer standards, making sure you fill at the right temperature. An old school torque wrench, a level, optional if you want to be really careful about your fluid fill level. And finally, a plastic lid to make sure we catch as much fluid as it comes out as possible. The link to these and other parts and tools you might need for this job are in the description below. Check out the Amazon link. You can also follow the link below to obtain the repair manual for this particular vehicle. That will include directions and torque specs for this repair as well as a bunch of other repairs you might do later. Let's check up this vehicle for number one, access to the vehicle underneath. Two, to make sure that we fill the transmission fluid to the proper level. We've put the vehicle on the front on ramps we have a level here we're going to jack up the back end and secure it with some jack stands until we get level across here and on the back end here a jack is underneath the vehicle we're going to jack at this point here at the rear differential jack this up and get the vehicle on jack stands make sure you got your parking brake applied the vehicle is now lifted up and level i have a few extra jack stands placed for safety the back of the vehicle is fully supported by these jack stands. And just for safety, I also have this jack here. It's not currently supporting any load, but it would in case something else failed. Underneath the vehicle, you can find here the transmission fluid pan. This is gonna have to come out eventually. And three bolts are really important to check to make sure we can loosen them up before we go any further. This is the drain plug, the overfill plug, and finally the fill plug is a little bit hidden. Up here, there's a connector, it's hard to see. And if you go toward the back of the vehicle, you can fill it up here. This is a large 24 millimeter bolt that you're going to have to use a socket for. That's not standard with many socket sets. So link below to purchase your own before you start this job. This is the front of the vehicle to get yourself some orientation. Typically, if you're doing just a drain and fill, you can loosen up this bolt, drain your fluid and fill up here. But if you're going to change the fluid filter, which I am, this entire pan needs to come out. With the 14 millimeter socket, let's ensure that we can loosen up this drain bolt and it's loose let's tighten it back up a little bit we don't want to drain yet and up here i have a 24 millimeter socket the fill plug is loose i'm not going to pull it off yet with a five millimeter allen key let's make sure that we can loosen up this bolt and it is i'll just tighten it back up for now Purely for better access to this pan and some bolts back here that we'll remove later, we need to remove this little protective cover. So for that, I'll use a 12 millimeter socket, pull off this bolt number one and two. And pull out this cover. Our pan's fully exposed, so now we'll use our 14 millimeter socket and remove fully this drain plug we have below our bucket we're going to drain the fluid into that this is a special bucket it has gradations so we can measure how much fluid comes out we're at least going to put that much fluid back into the vehicle and we'll let that drain what are you doing boy all right the transmission fluid is only dripping now we can reinstall our plug We're now ready to drop this transmission pan. In order to do that, all these bolts along the perimeter have to be removed. I'm going to use a 10 millimeter socket on a drill to do that. And they'll just come out one by one. All right, pull the trigger. Good job. So we have one bolt remaining. We'll pull out that bolt. I want to support the pan as it drops down. I have below here my oil spill mat. Link below to purchase your own. And then also, this is gonna catch some additional oil should it come out of here. And this is loose and coming down. There it is. 
it's dripping a bit into the pan below. That's our filter. We're gonna have to pull that off. And around the perimeter, we got a bunch of solenoids. One of them might be faulty. Let's check that out too. What do you think? Remove this filter by pulling out four bolts around the perimeter. I'll use a 10 millimeter socket to do that. And pull off the filter. The oil pan's removed, so let's dump that fluid into our bucket. We can get a first look at our oil, and it is brown. Not incredibly horrible. What I'm interested to see is if in the pan or in the fluid we see any metal shavings indicating transmission wear. We're gonna have to clean up our pan, but you'll see here magnet one, two, three, and four. These can be removed from the pan, they just slide around. And then you can inspect them to see if they have any metal shavings on them. Nothing's horrible at first glance. There are small shavings, but use a rag and clean this all up. By the way, does your bulky wallet hurt your butt when sitting on it in your back pocket? In your front pocket, does your fat wallet leave an unsightly silhouette? The thin wallet is exactly what you need. At only six millimeters thick when packed with eight cards and cash, thin is less than half the thickness of the typical bifold or trifold wallet. The trick, thin does not fold. Cards, cash, and wallet material are not all stacked on top of one another. Further, thin bends to conform to your body shape and movements. All the while, thin fits in your back pocket, front pocket, or bag. Thin wallet is comfortable, sleek, and invisible in your pocket. Order thin, the world's slimmest wallet, at the link below. Your butt will thank you. Using the Lexus GX repair manual, which you can find in the link below, I've downloaded this and searched for P2714. I come up with this description here, which leads us to believe that the shift solenoid D, which we're having a problem with, is in fact called the shift solenoid valve SLT. Digging a bit deeper, we find an image of the transmission and the SLT solenoid is toward the front end of the vehicle. The other solenoids are in the back, so we're going to Pay special attention to that particular solenoid. We also find how to inspect the shift solenoid valve SLT. This is the image of the solenoid. We're instructed to remove it and we're going to measure the resistance across these two pins. We're also going to apply 12 voltage across the pins and observe what happens. When we measure the resistance, we're looking to see 5 to 5.6 ohms resistance. Otherwise, it's bad and it has to be replaced. When we apply 12 volts to the solenoid, we are going to apply it with a 21 watt light bulb along in that circuit. I imagine that's to limit the current to the solenoid. When this happens, we're looking for the valve to move and make an operating noise. If it does that, the solenoid's potentially good, could still be messed up. The other solenoids can be tested in similar ways, although you're gonna be looking for a different resistance. And a lot of them do not require that the light bulb be used when applying the 12 volts. Underneath the vehicle again, you can see all the shift solenoids and other sensors lined up here. This is the shift solenoid D. You can check all the solenoids if you'd like, but I'm gonna check just this one. If it's a bigger issue, I might take it to a mechanic. To remove the solenoid, remove this bolt. This is done with an eight millimeter socket. Watch for this little pin because it comes out of this hole when you remove that bracket. Shift solenoid can move in and out and be disassembled from the valve body. With some gentle prying, we can remove the electrical connector from the solenoid. And let's take this to our bench and test it out. With our multimeter set in resistance mode, we're going to probe the leads on this solenoid. The leads are connected to terminals 1 and 2 on the solenoid. And we're reading 5.9, 6.3 ohms. It's a little bit higher than the max of 5.5 specified in the repair manual. So this solenoid is a little suspect. All right, so for this next part, we're going to apply 12 volts. I'm using instead of a car battery, just a power supply. I have connected in line with this 12 volts, a 21 watt light bulb. This is the negative or positive terminal. I'm gonna connect the negative terminal and we're listening for activation of the solenoid. The light bulb should turn on as well. And you can hear the clicking, light bulb's turning on. The solenoid's moving in and out. So it looks like the solenoid might in fact be okay. 
While I have the solenoid out, I'm going to give it a quick clean out with some compressed air. The solenoid seems to be working. It didn't measure the exact expected resistance, but I'm going to reinstall it and keep in mind that maybe this is an issue and have to come back later and actually swap it out. So let's reconnect the electrical and reinstall. Put your new gasket on your transmission oil plant and replace the magnets. They go in little spots that are marked with indentations. They're all cleaned up now. There's no sign of metal shavings. Prepare your new filter by placing the O-ring, which is purchased separately. Make sure you get that part number below. Pop that onto the cylinder. And now we can replace this into the transmission housing. Assemble your new oil filter to the housing. This cylinder matches this cylinder bore here and resecure with the original bolts. With the new gasket on the oil pan, let's lift it up and reinstall. And now onto securing all of the bolts. I'm gonna attach these by hand and then snug them up to the proper torque with the torque wrench. And I'll use a torque wrench to tighten up these bolts to the proper torque. These are to be tightened up to 62 inch pounds. It's about five foot pounds. Removing the drain bolt, we're going to replace the original crush washer with a new crush washer and reuse the original drain bolt. You may buy an entirely new drain bolt if you like, but I don't have an issue reusing. The flat side of the new crush washer is gonna face downward and let's reinstall to the drain pan. And per the repair manual, torque this bolt to 15 foot-pounds. And now we need to refill our transmission with transmission fluid. In order to do that, we're going to use this tube. Link in the description below to get your tube. Feed this tube down here in this direction. We pulled our tube through to the underside of the engine, and we're going to insert this end into the fill hole up in this direction. It's hard to see what's going on here, but I'm feeding that tube a few inches into that fill hole. The outer diameter of the tube matches pretty closely the inner diameter of the fill hole. And with that, our little tube is routed into our fill hole. At the top side of the engine, I cut my fill tube to length, attached a funnel, made sure my funnel was very clean, and this is where I'll add my transmission fluid. So this is the old transmission fluid. I gathered about four and a half quarts. There's still some remaining inside the engine and other parts that I didn't fully clear out. I have six quarts of transmission fluid. I'm likely gonna put in, well, at least four and a half, five, maybe six. It's okay to overfill a bit because we're going to be draining a little, little bit later. Once the transmission fluid reaches the right temperature, we'll open up that overfill plug and let out any extra transmission fluid. By the way, if you were just doing a drain and fill, not also replacing the filter, you could just open up the drain plug drain out your transmission fluid and put back into the transmission whatever you drained out. That's going to be no worse than whatever it was, although it's not the exact procedure to get the exact correct fluid fill. So from here, let's add in our transmission fluid. So now we added our transmission fluid, we're going to remove our fill tube and reinstall our original bolt that covered up the fill hole. I'm going to reuse the original bolt as well as the original o-ring no problem there snug up this bolt just a little bit we've likely overfilled our transmission fluid and that's intentional we're going to now set the proper level there's a number of ways you can do this i'm going to use a computer to read the temperature of the transmission fluid and at the specified temperature according to lexus that is 115 degrees fahrenheit i'm going to open that overfill plug and let the excess oil drain a number of different ways exist to read the temperature of the transmission fluid some people will use an infrared thermometer and measure the temperature of the transmission housing area. That will get you approximate, but it's pretty cheap to buy this computer. I can also use it later. This will tell me the exact temperature of the fluid. In order to use this, I'm going to apply the brake on my vehicle, the manual brake. Make sure you keep this on. I'm gonna turn on the engine. I'm in park right now. And now I'm going to navigate this computer, link below to purchase your own. I'll go to diagnose. Auto detect to find my vehicle and the VIN number. After it's found the VIN, select OK. Select 16 pin DLC. GX460. I don't have radar cruise, and then that's all OK. The health report's now going to download. 
the health report downloaded so I'm going to back up and we're going to select EC MECT engine and ECT okay and read data stream we'll select here the automatic transmission fluid oil temperature one right now the transmission fluid is 102 degrees I'm going to wait until this reaches 115 to open that overfill plug in the meantime up here we're going to make sure all of the transmission fluid is circulating so my foot is still on the brake I also have the parking brake on and we're going to shift through the gears to circulate all that transmission fluid so I'm going to take the vehicle out of park go to reverse neutral drive and then we're going to go to S we're at 4S, we'll go to up to 5S, up to 6S, and now we're going to downshift, and again, 4S, and again down to 3S, down to 2S, down to 1S, all right, and then back up. Two, three, four, five, drive, neutral, reverse, park. All right, we've circulated the transmission fluid. Our temperature is now 109 degrees. Let's get under the vehicles and get ready to set our proper transmission fluid level. All right, here we are. The computer reads over 115 degrees. So I'm now going to use my 5 millimeter Allen key and open up this overfill plug and set the proper fluid level. I have my bucket here ready to catch anything that comes out. It might be up to even a quart that comes out right now. And of course it'll be hot. I'll wait until this fluid flow becomes just a drip and then I'll reinsert my own plug and then we'll be at the perfect level and completely done with this job. Reinsert our plug, tighten it up, and our job is done. I don't see any leaks, everything seems to be good. So this job did take a few hours to complete, although I'm glad I did it. I could not find a local mechanic, even an independent dealer, to complete this project. A local Toyota dealership did offer $1,000 to complete this project, although they were going to do just a drain and fill, they were not going to drop the pan and replace the filter. So I'm glad I did this all myself, I learned a bit along the way, and I'm sure the job was done correctly. I hope this helps you with your project.